So I'm going to be showing you in this final video how I might apply detail. And it's usually an area that people feel most comfortable with because you can actually literally describe exactly where you want the paint to go using your brush. I think it's also because we've, we've learned to write with a pen for all our lives. So it's almost like training ourselves to apply detail. So if you just move a little bit closer, what we're going to do is we're going to do a couple of things. Um, if you've watched the previous videos, you'll know that I mentioned I would put the detail for the moon on before applying a cloud going over the moon. So I've allowed that detail to dry now. That was using the lifting off brush, the smallish um, brush that was going to, um, it removed some paint for my painting and it blurred the edge of the the moon. Now what I'm going to do is go back to my large painting brush again. This is a one inch flat brush. I use it all the time because it gives sculpture to my paintings whilst the water actually gets rid of the, the sort of sculptured edges. So um, this just puts a bit of the sculpted element back in. What I'm doing is I'm still using exactly the same colouring. I'm using a quinacridone violet to carry these areas across the moon as if there's a cloud drifting over. So that is the quinacridone violet going in. This time, because we're now applying detail, I'm turning the brush onto its corner, giving me a little bit more pinpoint accuracy about where I'm going to put the paint. I started quite thinly. I'm going to add more paint in. I'm thinking I'll probably use other colours that are nearby, like the ultramarine. Um, so I'll pop a little bit of that in, but not heaps. And then it will blend more with the area on the side and then um, maybe a bit more thick quinacridone violet because we're actually now putting in detail. Remember, anything you apply at this stage will look much stronger than the dried painting because watercolours dry lighter. If you want it, any details soft, you need to put them into wet. So the first um, applied layer of paint is actually on dry, so it's created a hard edge wherever I put the brush. The second application went into the wet area, and of course it's spread within that. So let's just clean my brush. I'm going to let that dry a little bit. I might just put a tiny bit of cobalt turquoise in. That was my, my fun sky colour. I'm actually going into the palette and I'm grabbing some cobalt onto the brush. It's such a snazzy colour. <laughs> so that's the detail on the moon. Now I'm going to move to the third brush. So we've talked about the large one inch. We've talked about the lifting off brush, which is just a short stubby version with shorter bristles. And then the third brush is going to be my rigger or my fine watercolour brush. It goes to a really good fine point and behaves almost like um, a pen. The, the length of it allows lots of paint to be held inside, which means that you can continuously draw a line for quite some time. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to put some trees over the top of the um, hill and into the the um, moon area because it's going to cause massive amounts of contrast because my trees are going to be silhouetted and they're going to really show up against the white of the moon. This will not only make the trees look interesting but it will allow for glow so the moon will actually look like it's illuminated from behind. So I've decided to grab um, a photograph. I tend to keep lots and lots of images of places I've been and um, particularly trees because I love trees. So this is just a jumping off point for some of my trees for, for this area of the painting. So I had to wait a quite a long time to allow this area to dry. So I'm gonna go in with an area of paint and this is going to be my land and I'm following the, the um, pencil markings that I put in before. And do you see I've turned the brush so I can actually see what I'm doing. So it's very important to be able to see where you're placing the paint. I know that sounds obvious, but you really don't want to be going like this or like this. You're covering up the, the area you're painting. This next layer is, is land, so it's darker. I planned that in advance in the first uh, video. And um, I'm just ladling on the paint now. And I'm trying to create an interesting curve 
in degrees of um, accelerated line, basically. So this is a little bit dull. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach for one of my cheapest um, uh, items, materials, which is salt. That's um, normal table salt. Pop it in a hand and I'm going to sprinkle this into the paint and it's going to suck up a little bit of the paint in each, each um, grain is going to pick out um, a hole in the paint. Um, I may have to do this again because it reacts best when the paint is just about to be dry. Back to my rigger. We've now got a piece of land that we're going